Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is a absolutely beautiful day here in Iceland and the conditions are ever changing, which is kind of what I wanted to make this video about. So I've shot Stockness or Vesterhorn, which is where I'm standing and you can't tell, three mornings in a row. And the conditions have been completely different every time. But this particular morning, the mountains are completely covered in clouds. And it kind of got me thinking, especially on this trip, because it's been very difficult to photograph things, that a lot of the times the conditions that you're gonna walk into are not what you expected or wanted out of the shots that, you, that you're trying to get. Especially if you only have one or two mornings at the locations you're going to, you really might not have a lot of conditions to work with. So I thought I'd create a video that talks about a few tips to help when conditions are not what you wanted them to be. In this particular case, obviously this location is pretty famous for the mountains that you can't see in the background. So a tip that I'm going to try here is get a little bit more intimate by using my telephoto lens. Maybe they won't be the wide angle shots of the black sand beach or these little brushes in the foreground with the mountains in the background, but I still think we can come away with a cool shot if we try hard enough. And what's really interesting is you might come away with something unique from a location that people shoot all the time. Just walking around here, I've seen at least 15 photographers. It's just a very popular spot for good reason. It's absolutely gorgeous and it has everything you'd want out of a normal composition. Leading lines, big mountains as a background, cool things in the foreground with the black sand beach. But as you can tell, that is not what we're getting right now. So I'm gonna put my telephoto lens on, I'm gonna walk around and I'm gonna to try to find some shots that are a bit more intimate, that use things that are happening here that are unique, which is this cloudy mountain range and the sun peeking through, as you can tell right now. So I'm gonna do that, walk around, try to find some shots and bring you along the way. So something that you have to be careful of when you are shooting more intimate shots at a location is to remind yourself what makes that location unique. So I found myself trying to shoot some of these waves and then realized, how can you tell where I am? And even though I could get a good shot shooting those waves or try to find something that's really cool right there, nothing says Iceland about it. Nothing says Black Sand Beach. Nothing says any of these, I don't know, uh, grassy, <laughs> Uh, strawy hills. Nothing says that in those photos. So don't stop yourself from taking a good photo, even if it doesn't say where you're at or what's unique about that spot. But remind yourself what makes this spot unique and try to find compositions based around that. You just watched me shoot down low where this light is catching the straw here and there's, you can see the shadows of the clouds actually moving on the mountain behind me and I was just trying to shoot a layered shot that way that I'll put on the screen after I'm done talking. But those are the kind of things you have to remind yourself of or you should try to remind yourself of is what makes that location unique even though you're trying to step outside of the box with the shots that you're taking because you're not gifted with this mountain range in the background. So keep that in mind. just like that, the mountains decided to show themselves, which is also a great tip that sometimes you just wait around long enough and uh, the conditions will change. But a lot of the times that doesn't happen. And those tips that I just talked about, using your telephoto lens to take some more intimate shots in a location that's just not giving the conditions you expected can be really helpful. Now, obviously I did throw my wide angle lens on and take some reflection shots because, well, that's what I'm here to take, but regardless, the tips still remain and they will definitely be helpful and they help me all the time. And honestly, sometimes they just get you thinking outside the box. They 
get more creative rather than taking your standard easy shots that you've already seen taken by other people and you can find things that you just never thought you'd find in certain locations. So maybe it doesn't give you the results you expected, but sometimes it might even, you might come away a better photographer trying to find some of those harder to find shots because of the conditions you're presented. Anyway, stay tuned, I got some more tips coming. Thanks for watching. Iceland, if you've never been, can be quite challenging for conditions. One thing that I've learned is that if I think about my edit, if I think about how I'm gonna edit a photo based off the conditions I'm being presented, that'll help me find compositions or things that I wanna shoot. For example, this composition that I'm standing in front of is a slightly snow-dusted peak, and you've got these great colors in the hills here, and I've got this waterfall in the foreground. So things that I'm thinking about are, I wanna slow the water down to get that nice movement in the shot. But I also wanna accentuate those greens because those are really the only color in the shot to contrast with that snow-capped peak. And it's those kind of things that I'm thinking about as I'm taking the shot. Even though this isn't a great shot in terms of lighting or anything like that, considering how gray it is, it's actually raining on me right now. But thinking about how I could edit it and make it moody and accentuate those things really helps me hone in on what could look good or what looks good in the compositions that I'm trying to find. Conditions can be really challenging sometimes, especially when you're in a place that is mostly overcast and gray. But using those techniques and using things that you know how to do in the editing suite can help you decide on what you wanna shoot. I shot a shot earlier or yesterday that was, I knew I wanted to convert to black and white. So I really didn't care about the colors in the shot. I cared about light because contrast is the most important when shooting in black and white. So that's what I aimed for. But those are the kind of things you want to think about when you are approaching tough conditions. How can you edit the photo that you're going to capture? And you might be asking yourself, well, I don't know. I don't know how to edit yet. I, that's the last thing I'm learning in photography. Well, as you get better and as you edit some of your photos, you're going to learn a lot more techniques and you're going to learn things. You're going to learn your style and you can find those things, especially that are going to come out when you're out in the field. And just like that, conditions change. I had to pack the stuff up. It's uh, really starting to rain now, so heading back down the hill. Thanks for watching. I think I got one more tip for you coming up, hopefully. <laughs>
But what I do have is a tip to help with your journey as a photography, especially your mental health as a photographer. And that is, I know many times I go to places and I only have one morning or one evening there. And I really want things to work out. I want to get those insane colors in the sky or I want to get the exact shot that I'm going there to get. But a lot of the times it just doesn't happen. I don't get what I expect. And over the years, learning to not let that get me down has been super important so that I can continue just enjoying photography regardless of the conditions that present themselves. And I think that's super important is even though you might only have a finite time there, just enjoy it for what it is, regardless of the photos you get. And it'll continue to motivate you to keep shooting photography, keep chasing that amazing light that we all want in our photos. Anyways, I'm gonna show you the edit from that Brewer Foss photo. And I actually did that entire edit live on stream that you can check out here. It's pretty, pretty long, but I do go through every step of the process, evening out my pano, getting all the proportions right and everything. So if you're into that, check it out there. And uh, if you're into this video, you can like it. If you loved it, consider subscribing. And I'll see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate all the support. Later.